Welcome to the BearCast, hosted by Brooks Blackbutt. Election special! I'm here with Deputy City Clerk Beth Leckity. Uh, just to start, how do you register to vote? Jumping right in. Okay, so there's a million ways to register to vote, but there's a lot of caveats to it. So easiest way is online. Michigan Voter Information Center has everything that you need in terms of voting. So it'll tell you where your precincts are. It'll tell you um, how to apply for an absentee ballot, but the biggest thing is registering to vote. Um, you can apply at any Secretary of State branch. Um, when you go there to do anything like get a license or a state ID, um, there's a lot of government agencies like veterans organizations that are allowed to register people to vote. Um, and the clerk's office, your local clerk's office, is a good place to register to vote as well because you can one on one talk to the people that are going to be handling that registration. Um, everywhere else sends us your registration and then we handle it from there. But if you want to go straight to the source, local clerk's office. Um, however, the caveat in that is that when you are 14 days from an election, the only place to register is the clerk's office. So now that we're in that 14 day window before this upcoming election, only the clerk's office is the only place. And then even if you're not 18, are you able to register to vote so that you're eligible once you turn 18? So up until this year, you've always been able to register to vote as a 17 and a half year old that was going to be 18 by the next election day. That was always the standard. But now, because of a proposal that was passed in the last couple of years, there is pre-registration available to 16 and 17 year olds. Um, so 16 and 17 year olds can use, it's a different form. It's a pre-registration form that will basically say, I'm pre-registered, therefore when I turn 18, I won't have to worry about it. And it's automatically going to register me to vote when I turn 18. So it's something to get out of the way early if you want to. Um, you will be automatically pre-registered if you go to get, let's say, your graduated license or do any transaction with the state, like renewal tabs on your car or I'm not sure what else you do there, but anything else you do there. Um, so. You can register when you're 16 or 17. It will automatically register you if you go to Secretary of State for anything. 18 is when you're eligible to vote. And if you're just confused about all of that, anytime you go to the Secretary of State, there is automatic registration for everybody, not just 16 and 17 year olds. It can be a 30 year old, a 50 year old, a 70 year old. If you go and do any kind of transaction at the Secretary of State, you're going to be automatically registered to vote unless you tell them you don't want to be. So unless you opt out, the registration is there. Okay. Um, what are the different ways to vote? There's a lot now. It used to be very, um, you go in person on okay. election day, right? But now they've made it easier but more complicated. So um, you can vote by absentee ballot without a reason. You used to have to have a reason. You, if you were a certain age, you were going to be out of town for work, things like that. But now there's no reason absentee voting, early voting, which is in-person voting for nine days before the election day, and then in-person on election day. So there's three ways. There is a tiny bit of caveat in that saying if you are a military person, if you are stationed overseas, there are certain rights allowed to you as a military voter or an uh, overseas voter so that you can vote quicker then let's say somebody that is here since mail overseas takes some time yeah. so there's an email option but there's a specific form that they need to fill out and usually their um, consulates or their military personnel will help them with that. Okay. Um, how do you get a mail-in ballot? Okay, So you have to apply. Um, it used to be that you had to apply for every election going forward so you can call the clerk's office you can go to the Michigan Voter Information Center, michigan.gov slash vote is that website. Um, but it used to be that you had to apply for every election. You still have to do that, but now if you apply and you check a little box that says, send me a ballot for every election going forward that I am eligible for, which is pretty much all of them, um, you'll get one, you'll get a ballot without an application for every election going forward until you either 
move out of state or request your registration to be canceled. So it's pretty easy. Online is the easiest way to do it. Um, if you come into the clerk's office, there's a form that you would fill out, but it is a small, short application. And then, like I said, if you check that box, you never have to do that again. And then, is there a deadline for asking for a mail-in ballot? There is. So, there's two different deadlines. One is by mail. If you want to receive your absentee ballot by mail, you have to request it by 5 p.m. the Friday before the election. So, this Friday. Okay. If you want to vote in, if you want to vote by in person with your absentee ballot, on Monday, the day before the election until 4 p.m. is the deadline to request your ballot in person and get it handed to you yeah. to fill out and then bring back before 8 p.m. on election day. Okay. So mail is Friday before, and after that we can't mail anymore, but we can give them to you in person until Monday at 4. Okay. Um, do you have to register to vote early in person? You don't. So if you're registered to vote, we don't care how you vote. You can vote any way you choose in one of those three ways that I mentioned earlier. But you don't have to tell us your intentions. You can show up at any one of those places, but just one of those places. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's obviously um, the presidential election is stealing a lot of the headlines for the this election, but there's other races. What are some of the local elections on the ballot? There are. So state rep, you have your member of Congress, um, you have local school board, that is important to us. There's a couple proposals um, for Wayne County and for our this school district, Wyandotte School District. So it's more than just that. There's all of the county offices as well. So county clerk, county treasurer, register of deeds, um, your sheriff, your local commissioner. So there's um, a lot of that. And in addition, there's also the regents of U of M and trustees for most of the school boards or, or the universities within the state. So there's tons to vote for. Um, one of the things that we get a lot of calls about is, do I have to vote for all of these things? And your ballot is your ballot. So you can do what you want. If the presidential thing scares you or you don't really care, which you know that's up to you, I, I urge people to care, but at the same time, if that's not your bag, then you can, there's many other things to vote for. And you can leave things blank that you don't understand, but those races that are important to you are the ones that you should vote on. Um, if someone is under 18 and is not eligible to vote, is there a way they can help the electoral process at all? So you can volunteer to be an election inspector. Um, there are a lot of offices that have budgets that are able to take on um, interns and co-op students to help during election seasons. Um, but volunteering as an election inspector, not only is it a um, good experience to learn the electoral process, but we also pay. So nobody in the state of Michigan doesn't not pay their election inspectors. So while it's not nearly as much as some would think or some would think that they should be paid it is still a paid position and as long as you're 16 or older and have the ability to miss school let's say if you have school on an election day which i would not suggest but once you graduate maybe or if the day is if you have the day off of school or let's say in an august election when there is no school that's a great time for young people to get involved and then a personal question. Why do you <laughs> think it is important to vote? Oof. Well, I will say, I, I was young once too. And I didn't always understand, you know, what, why it was important. But as I get older, you know, um, complacency doesn't help anyone. Um, if you want to be the change, you have to voice your change and your vote. Your vote is your voice. And I know it's cliche. But it is. So if you think that, I guess, it doesn't matter, it's just one vote. But if a lot of people think that way, then it's a lot of votes that aren't being counted. It's a lot of voices not being heard. So 
I say if we're willing to vote for the best pizza or our favorite ice cream in some survey that's, you know, put out by, you know, one of the local news channels or something like that, then it only takes five to ten minutes of your time to vote a ballot, and why not do that too? And then is there anything that I missed that you would like to add? A couple things. So I, that's the one thing that I was thinking about. So I want people to understand the difference between the, the elections. Um, there's a February election in presidential years that is a party primary. And a lot of people are confused by that because you need to tell us which ballot you want. Do you want a Republican or a Democratic ballot? And that's not because anybody cares the way that you vote. It's because it's a party primary, meaning the parties are paying for it, and they want to know where their support lies. So you get one or the other. And it's nothing to say that anybody locally or even statewide cares, the parties care. And so when that comes to fruition and you get there to that point of your life where you're voting in that, just know that that's the reason why that, that, that exists that way. And then in August, you can vote. You'll have both parties or all parties on the same ballot, but you cannot cross vote. And cross vote meaning you can't vote for some Republicans and some Democrats. You have to stay in your party lines. And then come November, it is open. So you can vote however, whichever way you choose based on who was placed on that ballot from the primary votes. So once you get to the November ballot, you can cross, you can vote straight party, you can do whatever you want. But um, there's a very big difference and there's reasons for those differences in between those elections. And I just want people to know to not be intimidated by the voting process. It's easy. There are local, the great thing about Michigan is that we handle our elections locally, and a lot of states don't do that. Like Ohio is county-based, Colorado is state-based. But here in Michigan, you have local clerks that are happy to help and answer any questions and know exactly what they should be telling you. And we're able to converse with you just like we're conversing now. So um, don't be intimidated. Go out, check it out, get a sample ballot and see what you can do. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Um, everyone should vote. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And right. please come see Clerk Steck and I at the, at the office. He extends his, um, his greetings to you and to everybody that's watching because uh, unfortunately we're six days away from the election and both of us couldn't leave. So yeah. he wanted to be here, but um, I act in his absence. So he, uh, he's glad that you're doing this. Thank you for coming. You're welcome.